This is We the Sales Engineers Podcast, show 11. BiggerPockets.com is the best real estate site ever. Welcome to We the SE's Podcast, the show for sales engineers by sales engineers with your host, Ramsey Majaba. Ramsey loves real estate investing. If you ever get a chance to sit down with him for a one-on-one chat, be assured that he'll bring it up not once, not twice, maybe three or four times. Enjoy the show. Hello, SE Nation. Before we go any further, let me wish all Canadians a happy Canada Day. I hope you're enjoying the hot weather. And not to forget our brothers and sisters south of our border. Happy 4th of July. Thank you for choosing to spend time with me this week. Today I have a very special guest for you. He worked under the great Tony Robbins. If you don't know who Tony Robbins is then you really need to Google him. As a matter of fact, I'll leave a link to his site on the show notes, which will be at wethesalesengineers.com slash show11. I'm not affiliated with him in any way. I'm just a big fan. I do have some housekeeping items to go through. A couple of weeks back, I ran a giveaway for a couple of sales book and a rocket book. I want to thank everyone who participated. I appreciate that. And I want to let let you guys know that I'll reach out to the winners via email since they signed up to my uh, newsletter and I have their email and I'll let them know how to get their awards. All right, so my guest's name is David Hutchson or Hutch. Hutch has his own company. It's called Fire Up Training. And he was referred to me by Muhammad Barkad, which... He was on show, hmm, let me get that up, it was prepared, show six. So we, the sales engineers.com slash show six. So Hutch came to my radar, came onto my radar through Muhammad and Hutch, among other things, teaches people how to give presentations. And I'm not talking about PowerPoint slides. In this instance, a presentation is anytime you meet a customer, And it's just the way you stand, the way you uh, show confidence, the way you talk. And Hutch is full of energy, full of info. He gave me lots of tips here on this podcast. So have a listen. I hope you find it informative. Here we go. Hey, David. Welcome to the show. Hey, Ramsey. Uh, Yes, David Hutchison. Good, good to talk with you. I know you're all the way up in what Ottawa. I'm just down here in San Diego, but uh, thanks for the invite. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for coming on such short notice. You don't know me, but you accepted my invite anyway, so I appreciate that. Absolutely. Well, you know, you were you were referred, so uh, I, I I based that yes on that reference. <laughs> okay. Awesome. <laughs> Anyways, I'm excited. All right, great. Uh, so let's get started. Maybe we can uh, go back a little bit about your talk about your career and what you're doing right now. Yeah. So, hey, hey guys, um, again, like I said, I, I live in San Diego, California. It's not where I'm from, but I, I've lived here since 1989. And, and I actually moved out after graduating from the University of North Carolina. But I came out to work with um, really a, a man who's considered to be the world's top success coach. His name is Anthony Robbins, maybe known by that name, or, or Tony Robbins. But, but here I am, I'm, I'm hired. I'm hired on by one of my older brothers to be a sales rep, a field sales rep. And all really that meant was I'm going to go out there and speak two, three times a day to a sales organization and be a part of their sales meeting. I'm not going to charge you, be there for about an hour. But what I am going to do is at the end, I'm going to sell you to go see Tony Robbins live. It's a one day business event. It's going to sell out all the top sales people are going to be there. You want to be there. And, and that's where my career started in the world of speaking and selling. And so I got to tell you guys, it, I was horrible. Here I am, 22 years old. <laughs> if you can imagine this, I'm, in a, I'm, I'm walking into a sales meeting, and the sales manager goes, hey, guys, we got David Hutchison here today. He's going to teach you how to be more successful. <laughs> now, Ramsey, I'm 22. I'm in a sales office in a meeting. How old do you think the average person was in that room? 40 to 50. Exactly. So, and then they hear the 22 year old is going to teach you how to be more successful. How, you know, how excited do you think they were to hear from me? I'm assuming there were a bunch of groans. Oh, that was, that was a nice way of putting it. In fact, I'll tell you what happened guys. First of all, 
I love the car dealership on a Saturday morning sales meeting because everybody the night before, what were they doing, Ramsey? <laughs> Drinking. Exactly. So if you can imagine, they're coming in half dressed. They're, they're they're running late. I can remember some of the ties weren't even pulled up. They sit in the chair, laid over, and they go, "What?" And I would have people literally after they introduce me, a couple of them walk out of the entire meeting, just walk right out of the room as soon as they introduce me. And then it got worse. Then I started speaking, and nobody trained me. I was so bad that I lost a couple more. And it was really that pain, that early pain of having people walk out on me and walk as I was talking out on me. I go, man, I got to work on this. Unfortunately, I had the best coach, but he never taught us how to really go out there and win this game, this presentation game, that I had to work on it on my own and through my partner. And really, that's, you know, that's where I started. I started in the personal development field. But the cool thing was, as painful as it was, and I'm not saying this to tout anything about me because there's nothing special about me at all, is that I got to become the number one salesperson and I ran all the sales and marketing for Tony Robbins. for a lot, I did it for about six, seven years before I launched from there and started my own company. So that's kind of the early beginnings. Uh, you know, I've written a couple books on this. Not that that really matters, but it's really for me, guys, I'm a little biased, but here's what I tell people in business. To me, this is your number one business skill. And don't get me wrong, I do team building, I do leadership, other things. But at the end of the day, we are judged by how we communicate. And I just tell people, hey, it's nobody's fault. But most people learn how to present by watching a lot of, a lot of other average folks out there today. But how do you really go out and win this? That's really what it's about. And so anyways, that's kind of where my early beginnings were, Ramsey. That's where I started. And now you have your own company you mentioned. Uh, what, what do you do in that company? Yeah. And so, you know, we've got a couple of pillars, but, you know, the communication pillar is called fire up training and that's fireuptraining.com. And, and really what we do there is every way that you can go out and communicate, whether it's face to face, one on one, if it's a if it's a if it's a sales meeting, an executive room, a board meeting, whether you're in front of thousands of people, you know, we show you how to win that game. We, we show you how to win the virtual game of presenting whether that be WebEx, Zoom, some of the most popular tools out there today. We show you how to run an event, Masters of Ceremonies. And then we do an advanced class. And then we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one executive coaching. We do that literally around the world. And so fire up training is all around communication or let's say the word presenting. Okay. And presenting doesn't have to be like uh, PowerPoint slides. It could be just no. talking to people yeah. basically. Well, exactly. Just like you and I are doing right now, you know, or Hey, it could be a eulogy. Um, it could be a toast at a wedding. It could be a eulogy at somebody's funeral. At the end of the day, you already know you, every time you get up and speak, you can be one of two things. You can be unforgettable or you can be what forgettable. And so at the end of the day, it's really how you go out there and win that. <clears throat> and what's your other pillar? Well, the other pillar we do is we do a lot around leadership. We do a lot of leadership. And then the third area that we do is something on really what we talk about is called breaking through. We call breakthrough to greatness. But, but how do you go out there? If you had a great 2017, how do you break through that in 2018? What's holding you back? How to go out there and achieve whatever it is you're looking to go out there and achieve in life. And those are the three areas that we focus on. Okay. So uh, I got referred to you by Mohammed Barakad. Uh, he is an engineer at Cisco, so I'm assuming Cisco is one of your customers. Uh, you actually, they are, they, yeah, oh, they are indeed. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but they have been for the last 18 years. Okay, so you work a lot with sales engineers, not not necessarily salespeople. It's just anybody who would have to talk in front of people. Yeah, yeah. You know, our our primary sweet spot is this: is that you know, if you use a presentation to go out there and communicate your message, you know what what we do is we show you how to go out there and win it, and we call it it's a game. You know, it's a game like Monopoly. It's a game like anything. Ramsey, did you ever play Monopoly as a kid? Yes, I still do. Yeah, yeah, we all did, right? And it's probably been a long time for you and I. I'm an old man. I'm 53 now, but you know what? I couldn't tell you when I started playing it. I know it's probably like 40 years ago, but I know if I look back, I probably didn't do that well in the beginning. I don't know how about you. How did you do? Well, I sucked. Okay, good. That's most people. That's what they tell me. I sucked the first time. But I bet once you started learning how to play that game, you learned some strategies, I bet your success went up. In fact, 
I heard this about you. It's on the internet that you had hotels on Park Place and Boardwalk, and and you were kind of dominating the board or whatever it was. But I bet your success went up. Is that fair to say? Yes, it's been. Yeah, it's been and so that's the title of my last book. My partner and I wrote a book. It's called Win, win the Presentation Game but really how to go out there and win it. And so just like Monopoly, until somebody shows you how to win this, most people are kind of average at presenting. They're just kind of checking the box. You know what, Mr. Manager, Mr. Manager, I did my job. I, I, I did those 30 slides. I went through all the detail you asked me to do and just kind of checked the box. That may or may not be you, but I find that happens to people a lot. And so really of this pain that I went through, we said, how do you do it? And here's the good news, Ramsey. There's not 50 things you got to do to win the game. What if I told you there's only three things? I mean, that would get you a little excited, wouldn't it? Wouldn't you if I said three versus 50? I would want to know what those three things are. Yeah, exactly. And so here they are in a nutshell. So the first thing is this, and I, it doesn't matter where I go, guys. I travel literally around the world. Um, but one of the things that people tell me they struggle with is all about, you know, preparing the I, – I call, I call it a story – but what's called a presentation, they go, you know what, I'm going to use PowerPoint in this one. How many slides should I use in a 30-minute meeting? And then how much detail should I put on those slides? And then, Hutch, here's what I'm doing. I'm memorizing it. Is that effective? And then I'm curious, is there an order that you should put your content in? And so the answer is this, guys. Number one, I want to show you a system on how to really build out a killer story where you're excited to deliver it because most people, they're not that excited to do it over and over again, but where you're excited and we show people how to put it in the right order so that when you're done, the primary reason that you're ever going to have a conversation or deliver presentation. And I'll just ask you, Ramsey, why do you think people give presentations for a living? If that's something they're doing, those that are, why are they doing it for a living? Uh, I believe to sell something, generally speaking. I like that. I like that. The number one answer, though, is this. Hutch, by the way, that's my nickname. Hutch, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to educate them today. And I go, no, you're not. <laughs> okay, then here's what my job is. I'm going to go in there and get them excited about our company. I go, no, you're not. I believe our job is to do this. Whenever you communicate a message or a presentation, it's to drive an action. It's to get the audience to do something they wouldn't have done until they heard from you. And so the number one thing that we show people how to do, and there's only three, is how to create a killer story in the right order so that when you're done, it does exactly that. It shortens the sales cycle and it drives action. And so we show people how to do it. We use an acronym, Fire Up. So it's a system. You can go out, go back and repeat it every single time. Whether it's a 15-minute meeting, an hour, two hours, whatever it may be, it's a way to put the information in the right order. All right. And, and again, it's repeatable. So that's number one. Second thing, Ramsey, people go, Hutch, OK, guess what? I got a pretty good story. I'm feeling good about that. That's not my issue. Here's my issue. I've been doing this 10, 20, 30 years. I don't know what it is, but sometimes when I get into a meeting and I've done it before, I've done this talk two or three times in the past, I still get a little nervous. Why do I get nervous? I don't know why. I've been doing this for a while. And I just always ask the question, hey, Ramsey, have you ever felt nervous before a presentation? Yes. Yeah. And most people just say yes. But here's the other question I have for you then. Do you have to feel nervous? Let me ask you that question. Do you have to? I like feeling nervous. I don't know if I have to. <laughs> okay. All right. But what if, I could, what if I could show you another way? Instead of feeling nervous, what if I could show you a way to feel confident, ready to go? Yeah, I'd love to hear it. Yes. Yeah, because because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you will always perform at a higher level when you feel confident, ready to go, versus a little afraid, a little nervous today. And so what I tell people is, is it's just a game. You are playing again a manufactured game every day right now. When you wake up in the morning, are you tired? Are you are you optimistic? Are you excited? Whatever it is. But your, your brain is literally, let's use your technical world, guys. Your brain is a computer. And the thoughts that you put into it is the same thing as a program. You know, it's like the operating system. The challenge is people have run in, we're running some buggy software in there. And so what, literally what I do is I show them how to upgrade that software. And I give them some practical techniques that you can do that help rewire the brain so that you show up feeling confident, ready to go. And my reality is this, I would say 70% of your success in life 
is how you feel while you're up there delivering that conversation, that story. Does that make sense? That does make sense. Could you give us a couple of examples about those tips? Yeah. So literally one of the things that I tell people is this, um, and I'll just give you some basic ones right now, because literally what we do is we, I would say the way we deliver our, our training, our programs, it's 80% experiential where we're taking you through the exercises, but some basic little things that you guys may be doing already. Uh, number one is this, I, one basic philosophy that I have is I learned it from a science called NLP, neuro linguistic programming, but motion Motion creates emotion. Now, Ramsey, what do you think I mean by that? Motion creates emotion. I'll say it another way. Movement. Movement changes the way you feel. What does that mean to you? Well, as an example, you're standing up. You're standing with your head tall, shoulders back. Your, your motion shows that you're confident. Exactly right. Outstanding. And so if, if for, in order for somebody to feel nervous, they, they probably don't realize it, but your body's got to go there. Just as well as if somebody wants to feel confidence, your body has to go there. You know, if somebody is afraid they're going to cross their arms or they want to protect themselves, maybe they're closed off. Again, so one of the things that I get people to do is change their physiology. And that's why if you look at somebody, if they were an athlete, you know, one of the things they do to prepare for an event is they exercise, they warm up. Well, guess what? Presenting is really no different, guys. But most people don't have a routine. So what can you do? Some of the basic things that you can listen to would be, number one, what, what are you listening to in the car ride or the train ride before that meeting? Music changes the way we feel. So create a playlist of energizing songs and music to get yourself pumped up before you go on that next WebEx, that next Zoom call, that next across the executive table meeting face to face. Another thing you could do would be exercise. You know, again, that, that all comes into play with that, you know, motion creates emotion. That releases endorphins, one of the most powerful drugs we have inside of us today. Um, one little thing you can do is this. Um, Ramsey, you're, you're an engineer. And so when the computer doesn't work well, all right, let's pretend for a second you're, you're uh, tech support. I call you up. Hey, Ramsey, I got this laptop today. It's not running that well. What is the number one thing every tech support person is going to tell you to try even before you pick up the phone and call them? What will they tell you to do? Is it plugged in? Okay, it's plugged in. All right. All right, it's plugged in. I got a blue screen. It's running slow. What should I try first? Oh, that's trick. Reboot the computer? There you go. Reboot that's, that's it. That's looking. it. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Reboot. And so what, what, it's like control all delete guys. And so think about this. When you're, when you're um, holding on to that negative thought, I'm afraid, I'm nervous, I'm not ready, I didn't study, I don't know my content, you got to reboot the brain just like you have to reboot the computer. So one of the things that I'm even doing with you on this call today is I'm standing up because motion creates emotion. Sitting down, crunching your diaphragm, that's not an effective thing to do. So one of the things you can do, hey, you've seen athletes do it, but move around a little bit. <sighs> Clear your breath, you know, jump up and down, jumping jack, something like that. If you start getting yourself nervous, start breaking your pattern. It's called a pattern interrupt. And again, think, control, alt, delete, reboot, reboot, reboot. So look, I've just given you a couple, but these are kind of simple, basic ones. But literally what we do is we literally walk people through. And one of the things that I tell them is this, in order to go out and win this game, who do you have to think and feel great thoughts about? Who do you have to feel and think great thoughts about, Ramsey? Yourself. Yourself. And then if you're going to go in there and you're going to present to a customer, internal or external, who else do you have to think and feel great thoughts about? The customer. Exactly. So what I tell people is literally what I have them do is on their phones. I say, go into the notes app and here's what I want you to do. I want you to choose some thoughts that would be thoughts that would, would remind you of things that you need to do in this next presentation. That would be a optimal performance thought. Like, you know what? Here would be one. I love solving my customers problems. That would be an optimal performance thought. That's the thought that I want you to read over and over again in your head the night before the morning of. But guys, most presenters aren't doing that. Right before they're going up there and giving a presentation, what are they studying? What are they reading? The PowerPoint slide. That's right. They're still looking at their slides. And guess what that does? That just reaffirms in your brain, hey, you still don't know it. So what does that do? That breeds nervousness. That breeds anxiety. But what the best do is they think and feel great thoughts. So I want you to start choosing them. And so I tell people at a minimum, you got to have four optimal thoughts. Then you got to have at least three emotions. 
And, and, and the emotions are your gaps. Where do you need to improve emotionally? You know, um, and so where do you need to get better at? One would be, you know what, I am, and it's always an I am statement. It's not I'd like to, it's not I should, it's I am confident. I am joyful. I am vulnerable. Um, whatever it may be, wherever you, I, you know, wherever you need to improve emotionally. And the last thing I tell people to do, and this all is on your phone, is your supercharger. And that's something that just kind of supercharges you. It's kind of like Nike. Nike built their company on three words. What are those three words, Ramsey? Just do it. Just do it. So what is it something that you just say to yourself that kind of just supercharges you, turns the light on like, you know what? I got this. Game on. I knocked it out of the park. I had a blast. You know, it was awesome. But that's what the best do. They have a ritual. And again, if you want to change anything, you have to create a ritual. They have a ritual that before every presentation, they're not looking at their notes. They're not looking at their slides. They are putting in these optimal performance thoughts. They are putting in these optimal performance emotions and supercharges to start to program the brain what to go into and what to really focus on when they deliver that next conversation. So again, I threw a couple things at you. There's a lot of things I could throw, um, but hopefully that makes sense. That makes perfect sense to me. And I think that's a good start. Uh, I, I like it. I will. I don't do any of that. I would love to try it out and let you know. And I hope my listeners can do that and let you know what the result is. Yeah, awesome. Because it does make sense. Like it is a sport. You are trying to do something that's sport like. Why not treat it like a sport? Well, yeah. You know what? You know what? What I tell people is this. Hey, listen. The, the person who won the gold medal versus the bronze in the last Winter Olympics. My my belief is they didn't practice any harder than one versus the other but really probably what it came down to was their mental game and again it's just a game i saw one of our american skaters i remember he was supposed to be our phenom going to the olympics i don't remember the guy's name young kid here's what happened first routine he gets into falls down two three times doesn't even get close to even uh, scoring a medal next thing he goes into okay they go guys this is going to be his event he's going to take the gold he doesn't even make the cut Third event, same thing again. And then finally, here's what happens. He goes out there, and there are no judging on this. There's no metal possibility, and he absolutely nails it. These are people that don't even fall down in practice routines for months. But how is it when they get on the big stage of life that that pressure, that pressure causes them to maybe not achieve their best? And that's what I'm really sharing with you guys today is my whole thing is this. Anybody can perform well when there's not a lot of pressure. Well, what I'd like to do is show you how you perform well when all the pressure's on. Your boss is in the meeting. You got high stakes. How do you go out there? And that's what really the best we're able to do. But it's a game that you have to play to help you to do that. And so the third thing is this. First one, just to re be repetitive, what we believe is you got to have a process to create a killer story. That's your presentation. That's what you're going to say. Number two, you got, I don't care how good your story is, but – you got to feel like you're a winner. You got to feel like you're already won. How do you do that? Because nobody wakes up that way. And then the third thing is we're driving action. So how do you energize? How do you energize even the most difficult audience? And that's all through charisma or what we call delivery. And so one of the things I want to share with you guys, it's hard to do over a pod call. But one of the things they used to tell me was, hey, Hutch, when you go out to that next sales meeting, Make sure you look at everybody in the room. That's real important. So I can't demo this again over an audio, but I'll just kind of maybe say it to you. Here's what I would do. I would go out there and I would look at everybody in the room and I would go, hey, good morning, everybody. And I would just scan the room. And I wrote this in my first book. When you try to look at everybody, you're actually not in a conversation with anyone. And so what I've found is one of the most effective things you can do and what your brain was built to do when it actually communicates is you need to be in a one-on-one -on -one conversation because if you're not, you're going to look down, you're going to look up and you're going to go and you're going to deliver a presentation. In fact, I hate the word presentation. The title of this book, it says win the game, but Ramsey, the title I had on her before was it's not a presentation. I had a big red X over that word. And I said, it's just a conversation. So, guys, if you're listening to this, I'm going to tell you right now, you are your best when you're in conversations with your audiences. But what they ask you to do is come in and give a presentation. I don't want you to do that. But what you have to do is that you have to connect with 
one person at a time and really pull them into that conversation. Let me give you kind of a little example of that. That would be like going to a restaurant and you sit down, you look at the menu and you got your family there. Waiter comes up to you. What if the waiter came up to you or waitress did this to you? Okay, family, tell me what you guys want. Just tell me what you want. Everybody throw it, throw it all at once. All right. That would not be very effective. They don't do that. What they do is they probably would go to your, your wife or your mother, or whoever, and go, ma'am, are you ready to order? I'd like to take care of you. What would you like? One person at a time. And so what we found was one of the most effective things you can do when you communicate, and I'm doing this right now over a camera, even though you're only listening to me, but I'm looking right at the lens. Because when you're on a virtual call, when you look right at the lens, everybody on the other end feels like you're having a conversation with them, even though you're only looking at the camera. So in a face-to-face, -face, when you look at one person, it's called a connected conversation with one person at a time until you brought them in, approximately five seconds. And then what you're going to do is go find somebody else, just as the waiter waitress would be, until you brought them in. So it's a series of connected conversations. I know it's a little harder in my description over audio, but in a demo, it's very powerful. Does that make sense, Ramsey? I believe so. Well, let me try to okay. let me try to summarize yeah. it. See if I have it correct. Yeah, go for it. Basically, if when you're doing a presentation, you have to consider that each you're having a conversation with each one of these gentlemen or ladies in the room, and spend some time looking at each one in the eyes, making sure they're understanding what you're saying, and and go from there. Does that sound yeah. accurate? Exactly, and it's a connection. It's not a staring contest. But but here's what most people do. They, they go more like this. Okay, hey, guys, good morning. And they're just kind of scanning around. They're not really looking at anybody. And what that does is it causes you to go in your head, and you're not even having a conversation with your audience. You're having it with yourself. It's like your internal dialogue. And then the bridge words start coming in. Um, um, okay, so today what we're going to be talking about is, and uh, uh, yeah, and you know what? You see presenters do this every day. Guys, the way you break out of that is get connected. When your eyes are connected with another human being, you cannot go into your head and start having that internal dialogue conversation. Very important, very important. When people see this in our training, it's powerful. So that's number one. I won't go through all of them, guys, but I'll tell you, number two is this, is that, you know, think about when you shake somebody's hand. And, and again, Ramsey can see this because him and I are on camera. But I will, if I went up to Ramsey and he was in my meeting and I kind of, I kind of, if you can imagine, I'm off of my back foot with my hand out and I go, hey, Ramsey, nice to meet you. That would be kind of weird. But the way we're used to greeting people is we step into the conversation. So whenever you address somebody, whether you're sitting down and by even if you're on WebEx, you sit on the edge of your chair, you get full word. Um, but you do that very same thing when you meet somebody and you're talking to them or addressing them in a live conversation. What that does is it, it builds confidence within you, but it also makes that person you're talking to feel a lot more engaged with you. And so it's another something simple we can do. Again, I don't, I'm on a camera right now, but I know if Ramsey saw me right now, he's looking at me in this conversation where I'm filling the frame up. This is a different conversation, Ramsey, where I'm coming forward versus I know it is back here. Two different levels. But people don't realize when they talk off their back foot how ineffective it is. All right. Um, another one would be just, hey, guys, here's another little thing. It's called color. You got to make what you say colorful. What if I got on here and went like this? Um, hey, guys, it's, it's good to uh, address all of you here today. My name is David Hutchison. And by the way, this feels really comfortable for me because I do have a little sore throat going on here. But if, if this is just kind of where I, I kind of project everything, it's good for me. Um, how engaged do you think maybe you would be if you had to listen to me for 15 or 20 minutes? I don't know. I think what I just fell think? asleep. You could, could. I may lose you. So what I tell people is this, guys. It's kind of like it's kind of like the crayon box when we were in school. Um, I don't know about you, but my box, it had four colors in it. And because I inherited it from my brothers, I had red, black, white, and green maybe. Well, I don't know if you – probably some of you. I know it's probably some of you guys on the, this uh, pod call. Um, you're listening. I know some of you had that 64 Crayola box that even probably had the sharpener on the back. You were the, you were the special kid in the room. But do you remember any of the names in a 64 crayon box? I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to be red, blue, black, green, and orange, and yellow. Do you, Ramsey, do you remember one of those, those colorful names that they had in the 64 Crayola box? I can't say that I do. Okay, check this out. How about Aqua Marine? How about Aqua Marine? How about Magenta Periwinkle? 
They even have a color called tangerine, macaroni and cheese, brick red. And so my point is this, guys, is that the more you put into your story, the more your audiences are going to get out of it. The other thing you got to think about, the people that are paid the most money on this planet besides CEOs are whom? What industry? They make more money than anybody else, but they're not besides CEOs. Take a guess, Ramsey. Uh, inside sales? There's no way it's inside sales. No, it's, it's more than salespeople. So there's some good salespeople out there. I bet this, um, you, you may watch one of their uh, things on uh, this summer, and uh, I'm trying to lead you to the answer. Um, hey, I'll, I'll, guys, I'll make it easy for you. It's entertainers. Here's what it is. It's professional athletes. It's singers. And it's actors and actresses. And again, the word I already give you gave you, but what do they do for all of us? What do they do for all of us? Why do we pay them this much money, Ramsey? They entertain. They entertain us. So engineers, I got to tell you, your job is to make routers, switches, and wires. You got to make that stuff exciting. You know, you got to put something into it because if you just get up there and go, well, I'm not going to work that hard. I'm just going to kind of get it out and go, okay, guys, so what we're going to have today is we're going to talk about your network infrastructure. And I want you to know it is state of the art and it looks really good. But here's what we can come in and do. I got to tell you, you're going to lose some people. I'm not saying you got to go over the top and I may be putting a little bit more into this today because it's a pod call, but you got to put something into the words. And again, you got to make it colorful. You got to make it interesting. You got to make it pop. And so um, that's something else that we uh, I'll just share with you. There's like five things that we cover in there. I've given you guys a couple things right now. But at the end of the day, here's what here's at the end of the day. You just got to remember this. If you want to win this presentation game, you got to be willing to change the game. You got to change it. And the challenge with most people is they think, well, this is the only way to present. I got to show 45 slides in a 45 minute meeting. I always have to use PowerPoint. They got to be really busy. And I'm just going to get up there and regurgitate all that information. In fact, they read the slides. They don't even look at the audience. They read back at the projector screen and they just start reading along. That's ineffective. That's ineffective. And you know what? I know at the end of the day, you're not excited to give those. And so that's what winning the game is all about. How to go out there and change the game. All right. And so those are the three areas. Number one, real quick, just to refresh you guys. Here we are. Number one, you got to have a process or system to create a killer story like a blockbuster movie. All right. Number two, you've got to get up there. You're going to feel like a winner. I don't care how good your story is, but if you feel like crap, it's going to affect your performance. Number three, when you deliver it, you got to be able to energize even the most difficult customers, and you do that through your charisma. You do that through your delivery. How do you really engage people? How do you pull them into this story and move them so they do something at the very end? So those are the three things. All right? Great. Yeah. Any, any questions? Oh, so many <laughs> questions. You, you mentioned uh, FIRE fire UP is an acronym for something? Yeah, no, no, that's just the that's just the name of the company. It's it's fire and then up training dot com. And so that's just a yeah, that's just our website and that's that that whole company is all focused on this whole communication, presenting, virtual, face to face, stage, you name it. Executive coaching. Okay. And so you we talked about presentation. We said that it's not PowerPoint slides or it's it could be any personal communication with a customer or even internally. Which have you found more? Have you found PowerPoint slides to be more effective than other methods, or is there a method? If like if we take that eighty twenty rule, as engineers, we don't really have that much time to do everything that we want to do. Which yeah. would be the most effective method to relay your? Uh, well, here's the thing, and I didn't really go through fire up with you, but one of the things I would just share with my engineer brothers and sisters, and I, I listen, I've run two software companies, and so I've made a lot of technical presentations. I had my engineers, product specialists, overlays, I've had them all with me. But one of the things I just tell guys is this, here's one of the biggest things. You guys are brought in as the, the experts, and you feel like you got to go up there and cover everything. I'm going to tell you, don't do that. One of the things that I tell people, it's called the rule of three. What is the rule of three, do you think, Ramsey? What do you think it might say about anything when you talk about content? Focus on three most important aspects, possibly? Yeah, no no more. The, the rule of three is no more than three, even the meeting. The meeting shouldn't have more than one, two, or three outcomes in the meeting. Otherwise, it's too much information. So even that beautiful agenda slide that you're all married to, you think it's exciting, it's crap. No offense. But I'm going to tell you, nobody looks at a agenda slide and goes, wow, look at that agenda, Ramsey. 
I'm so excited. We're coming to this meeting. We're going to do 25 things up there. Man, this is going to be the best meeting of our week. No, that's not going to happen. And so um, we show people how to get up there and really sell it. But, you know, one of the things is this, is that when you talk about when you, I call it the education piece. Remember, it's fire up. So the E on fire is educate. But the education piece is this, no more than three big core concepts, all right, features, benefits. Even though your solutions may have 100 things, if you give them too much information, you know what that does to the brain? Analysis paralysis, all right? We want to give them just enough to reach the outcome. That's what we want to do. But when we, when we deliver it, we got to deliver it in what I call a, a sexy way too. But the education has to solve a problem. It's got to solve the customer's pain. So when you talk about that feature, that benefit, you got to relate it back to the customer pain, the customer problem. And one of my things that we do in there, the letter R is remind them of their pain. Hey, guys, listen, all great stories solve a problem. You got to remember that. And that's why you're really going in there today. You're not going in there just to tout all your features and benefits and specs and da, 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 da. Who cares? At the end of the day, what the customer wants to do, they want to solve some kind of issue. They want to get better at whatever it may be. Show them how to do that. They'll probably do some business with you. And so we really show people how to effectively do that. One of the things that I give them, it's a mantra in our training, Ramsey. Here it is. I'm going to say it to you. And I know there's only two of us here. So what do you, what usually do people say, Ramsey, when you go, no pain? What do most people say? No gain. And I, we go, no, not with us. Here's what we tell you. Hey, engineers, no pain, no P.O. All right. No pain, no P.O. But what most people want to do early on in a meeting is they want to kind of do their introduction, you know, kind of talk about what we're going to talk about. And they want to go right into the education piece. And we don't want to do that. That's the worst time to do that. And that's why I said, we'll show you how to put the perfect content right in your order. What you have to do is you got to go out there and you got to bring up the pain and you got to bring it up early and you got to bring it from down below back up to the surface. Otherwise, the customer's not going to do anything. So how, they've got a lot of problems in that organization. You got to bring that pain you're trying to solve up to the surface. Question so How do you bring up the pain and then have a presentation already ready uh, if you don't even know the pain, what, what the pain is? Well, you know, you bring up an interesting point. You know, a lot of these meetings, I don't want to get too far into this, but a lot of these meetings aren't set up correctly. You know, you, most people, they're, they're, they're like, if I asked them, hey, what, what, what's the number one problem you're going to solve for this customer? Well, we don't know yet, Hutch. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to go in the meeting to find that out. I'm just going to tell you that probably wasn't set up effectively. And look, it may not be your issue, engineers. I'll put it on the account manager who didn't set it up correctly. Right. But I'm not I'm not here to debate that with anybody here. But here's the thing. If you don't know what the pain is, then you still have to ask the questions early on. One of the easiest ways to bring up pain is ask questions. But you got to you got to put your doctor hat on. You can't just go with the, the first answers that come out. You got to dig deep because think about the psychology behind this, guys. Your customer, even though they have issues, even though you can help them, they don't want to tell you what they are. It's like guarded information, which is kind of interesting when you think about the psychology behind it. They have a problem. They know they want to get out of it, but they don't want to tell us really what it is. So you've got to be a little bit more you know, crafty in how you get that out of them. So number one, easiest way to do it is ask questions. Another way to get them to bring up pain would be a third-party story. I mean, think about it like this. The person that you're going to go talk to, that company, they don't care about you, but what they do care about is their biggest competitor. And if you have a client that is a competitor of theirs, you don't need to bring up the details of their issues, but just mentioning – you know, another company similar to them, just say, you know, what's interesting, Ramsey, you know, we were working with uh, da, 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 about six months ago, and they went through this same issue you are. I'm not going to go into the detail of it. That in itself will open them up. Another simple way, I'll just do it real quick. It's called attack and confess. And what I tell people is this, if you will attack yourself, your company, hey, you know what, Ramsey, I know we're talking about your issues today, but I will tell you right here, even at our own company, you know what, we, we went through this similar issue. What that does, it builds empathy, and that, again, opens people up with a little bit more, you know, um, you know, open to sharing what those really key core problems are. Because if you don't know what that is, there really shouldn't be a presentation. Because remember, if there is no problem, there is no presentation. So okay? basically share a pain to get a pain from the customer. Yeah, that's one way to do it. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot of things you can do. Absolutely. <clears throat> so I have an observation about what's happening today between me and you. Whenever you're talking about something, you're really asking me a lot of questions, right? 
is that something you would do in a large group of uh, like in a setting where you have a large group of customers as well? Absolutely. Yeah. Otherwise, you know what it is? It's a speech. It's a monologue. And who, who gets excited about that? It's a one way street. Nobody does. But really, you make a great point. It really should be. A, it's a dialogue. But one of the things that I tell people, too, is how do you ask questions of your audience? And I'll give you an example. Think of this. You're a lawyer. There's a witness on the on the on the stand. How are you going to ask questions of your witness? Do you ask them open ended or are questions that you're you don't know what's going to come out of their mouth? Because that's dangerous. And so a lot of people do that. But how how should you ask questions, Ramsey, in a business meeting? Well, uh, you led me to this, so it's a leading question uh, where you already know the answer. <laughs> outstanding, outstanding. And so think about it. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to take them down a path, and you're trying to guide them where you want to take them. And so lead them to the answer. Spot on. Awesome. So, uh, I feel like I can talk to you for hours, but I know you're a busy, busy man. So I'm just going to move on to the next uh, round, which I call the not so fire round where I ask you questions and you take your time answering Sure. So pretty much what we've been doing. But these are the same questions I've asked a lot of people. Okay. Other than a notebook and a pen, is there an essential tool that a sales engineer should be using? Other than a notebook and a pen, essential, uh, tool. Yeah. Um, well, you know, for me, I, I just come from the philosophy at the end of the day is, you know, it's not the PowerPoint, it, it's not the screen, it, you know, it's not the whiteboard, it, it's the human being, that's the investment. And, and you are the message, you're the presentation. But here's the thing, you know what, you know, there's a lot of great information out there, but when's the last time you really worked on this skill? Because I'll tell you right now, practicing on your customers, again, I use that word loosely, internally or externally is not the way to do it. Um, but when have you really sharpened the ax? And again, this is your number one skill. And what's interesting, it's the number one human fear. People are more afraid of speaking than they are of dying. What does that tell you? <laughs> right? yeah. but, but I would just say, you know what? No, it's you. It's the human being. That's the investment. So for me, um, that is your number one asset. So you mentioned you shouldn't practice in front of your customers, whether it's internal or external. How should you practice? Well, I would say, you know, hey, read a book. Um, you know what? Um, you know, there's all kinds of free stuff out there today. Um, you know, um, I, if I was working for a company, I would start looking around what trainings were in the area. And I would go to my manager and I would go, you know what, uh, Ramsey, I, I want to invest. In my, I want to get better, you know, for you. You know, and I'd like to go to this program, you know, would you, would you, would you be open to investing in me? If I had a guy working for me that wanted to get better, I would do whatever I could to help that person get better. Because what I tell all my leaders is this, I do a lot of executive coaching at really high levels. I go, look, leaders, you're only as good as your team. So if you want to get better, you better help those guys get better. And how you get better is you got to work on this. Uh, nobody's born the best engineer on the planet. It's a skill. You got to work on it. And so when's the last time you really put some real effort on it? Here's what we, you've all heard it before. We all get caught up working in our business that we don't take enough time to work on it. Well, when's the last time you really did that? Very true. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, and listen, it's easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day activity, right? We all get caught up. Man, I got, I got 10,000 things to do. No, you don't. <laughs> you got one thing to do. Schedule it. Schedule some time where you read a book. Uh, listen to it, go to a seminar, whatever it may be. Even if you, you know, you went and did some, join some speaking group or something like that. Some of them I'm not big fans of, but again, anything that you would be doing is a help. I would say in the right direction. Is there a group that you would be a fan of other than your company? As far as, you know, to have offerings and those types of things, I don't know. You know, we don't do much public stuff. Most of our work is all corporate, you know, so the Cisco's, the Microsoft's, you know, those types of companies, not just technology, but those are a lot of our customers. Uh, I came from the personal development world where it was more individuals. That was Tony Robbins, but I really enjoy the corporate world. But, um, you know, it's a great, I mean, there's, there's Toastmasters, things like that. Um, you know, there's some things that I think are good that they do. They do some things I'm probably not a big fan of, but at the end of the day, I don't think it would hurt. Okay. But that would be a good start, something like that. Or it just, you know, create your own group. Um, you know, I think we even may have some resources up on our website. There may be some tools up there at fireuptraining.com or, or hit us an email. I'll see if we can send out some stuff, get you on our newsletter. There's stuff that you don't even have to go through our stuff. We we're happy to send it out to you. Perfect. I will do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned you had a couple of books on this topic. Uh, one of them is how to win the game. 
Okay. Yeah, it's win, win the presentation game. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the one my partner, Tom McCarthy, and myself wrote about a year and a half ago. Um, it's done really well. And that's probably our, our most updated book. We have a we actually have a fire up book uh, on the class. It's called Fire Up Your Presentations. And then I have another book that I wrote years ago with one of my brothers called Speaking Mastery. So we've got like three books amongst ourselves. But I would say win the presentation game. It's up on Amazon if you're interested. Um, I don't know what they sell it for, to be honest with you, but it's up there. It's probably less than 10 bucks. But that would be worth a read. Um, again, what's the value of one idea? That's the whole thing. And at the end of the day, are you, when's the last time you got better? When's the last time you tried to do something where you improved? That's the key. Even if you're just listening to this pod coaching, uh, you know, that Ramsey's put out there, I think that's awesome. Um, that is something I've seen consistent with very highly successful people is that they're doing some things that the other folks aren't willing to do. They're taking some extra measures, and that's really what it takes, right? I wish we could all just get there, and it would just you know happen by a snap of a finger. It's not going to happen that way. It is a journey. you got to work on it. Um, but if you work, you know, I think you're definitely going to get some results, no question. All right. So you, you would uh, recommend starting with how to win the presentation game? I would if you were going to do something from us. I would just because it's a simple read, and it's got the most updated information from us. Um, you know, we call it 52 power plays in there, but there's 52, what they're like one page things you can do. You don't have to do all 52 of them, but there's 52 ideas in there. Take about an hour and a half to read the book. That's how quick it is. Cause we did a study Ramsey. Most people that buy a book, 6% of them actually finish it. And so we found that you have to keep it under a certain amount of pages, keep it simple. So we try to follow that process. Okay. Yeah. Um, last question. Is there an advice you would give in a, a sales engineer that he doesn't receive from anybody else? Is there any advice I would give them that they normally don't receive from anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it's kind of comes back to um, maybe that's something I said a little bit earlier today, but um, you know, one of the people, one of the things that people used to ask us when I was back at Tony Robbins, um, can I give you two things? By all means, it's your podcast. <laughs> all right. Well, one of the things that we we, we really kind of built the company on was uh, it's a it, it's it's from the Deming method, and you know a lot of you guys probably know Deming went over to Japan, and he helped revolutionize their industry. Um, but in Japanese, it's called Kaizen, and 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 the acronym is C A N I. And people used to ask Tony, well, what's the definition of success? And we used to tell people it's called Kanai, and what that stands for, guys, is constant and never-ending improvement. You know, if you think about a lot of us in, in our careers, first couple of years, man, you were excited. You worked really hard. And then what we tend to do is we kind of got off of that a little bit, and we just tend to do the same thing over and over again just for a longer period. But that's like, how do you get better every day? That's the key. You know, it's kind of one of my friends wrote a book called If It Ain't Broke. Most people say don't touch it. No, he says if it ain't broke, break it. Um, you know what? Whatever you did last year, you can't do this year. It's not enough today. So I would say number one is, is how do you really you know, commit to constant and never-ending improvement? And one of the things that we also had growing up and you know, early on in my family, my dad said, you know, if you can't, you must. So if you can't do something, you must do it. And guess what? If you must, you can. In fact, Ramsey, my dad told me, no kidding, as a, as a boy, he had four boys, he said, David, there's no such thing as the word can't. So for a big part of my younger years, I literally, I, I used to believe it. My dad used to say it's not even in the dictionary. I didn't even check it, but I just believed him. I took his word for it. You know, my dad said it's got to be true, but I literally didn't even believe in the word can't, can't do something. And so here's all I want to say to you is that if you, if you can't, you must. Again, it's got to make sense. It's got to be helpful. And then if you must, you can't. That's one thing. All right. But maybe two. I, I stepped over my boundary there. All yeah, right. It's all good. Yeah. No, that's but, awesome. Uh, yeah, Good my dad said. Here. My dad said the yeah. same thing. Oh, did he really? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So where can so you have the firedup.com website? If people want to reach yeah. out to you uh, to learn more about your programs, is that where they can reach out to you from? Yeah, that would be the best spot. I would say we got other websites, but I would just not to be confusing. But I would say yeah, www. I'm not gonna insult you with that, but it's fire uptraining.com fireuptraining.com you can just send an email on there it'll say contact says i'm not going to insult you guys uh, i assume we're talking to engineers so you're a lot more smarter about all this stuff than i am but absolutely we're on there love to hear from you uh even if you just wanted to get on our newsletters those types of things there's value in that um just communicate with you guys um yeah because at the end of the day we want to help you go out and win, win win the game 
the, the game that you're tasked with every day, and that's go out there and send a message that's better than your company, that's better than the product, because that's what they're going to remember, all right? At the end of the day, they're buying you. They're not buying that company. It's a human being that's got to communicate the message. Perfect. I'm going to have yeah. a link to your website on my show notes, which would be at show 11, uh, as well as the link to your books on show 11, and people can uh, go there to go to Amazon from it. And uh, Yeah, outstanding. That would be awesome. Yeah, no, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank, uh, that's almost an hour you spent with me out of nowhere for no good reason, but I appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, Rans, appreciate the opportunity. Always happy to help. And again, you're outstanding. And uh, great job on putting this together and getting the word out. All right, have a great day. You too. All Bye. right, cheers. Cheers. Bye. Thank you, Hutch, for coming on the show. This was a fairly intense conversation. I can see Hutch standing on the other side of the camera looking straight at me. And... I don't think he was like I don't think he could see me. Like I was on the camera as well, but I think his monitor was somewhere else. So he's just looking at the camera the entire time. So I found that interesting. He really embodies what he teaches and he I'll be trying out the tips that he provided. I will be reading his book and let you know what I think about that book. He's not providing it to me. I'm not affiliated with him again. Um the links to his books will be on the show notes. So we the sales engineers.com slash show 11. If you go through these links, I will get a small, small commission at no cost to you, or you can go direct to Amazon and search if that's the way you want to go. Before we go, I do have a request from you guys. I currently have zero ratings on iTunes and zero reviews. If you are finding this podcast useful and I'm talking to you, the person who's listening right now, It would be very useful for other folks, as well as myself, obviously, if you leave a rating or review on iTunes. I'm not asking you to fudge the review, so leave an honest review. If I suck, don't say that. But if you have, if I have room for improvement, which obviously I do, please let me know. That will help me. It will also help other people find the podcast. I don't know how it works, but iTunes works on some uh, rating system. So I want to thank you guys. Uh, end of May, I had 124 downloads of the podcast shows that I've published. And I said that I wanted to double it for June. And today is June 30th. And as of today, as of right now, I have 296 downloads. So I doubled and then some. Didn't hit the 300 mark, but now I'm just sounding greedy. So my challenge for the month of July is the following. I would like to hit 600 downloads for the month of July. And I would also like to get 20 reviews or ratings on iTunes. So if you haven't done so, which I'm pretty sure you haven't because I don't have any, please leave a rating or review. I hope you guys can help me out with that. Thanks again for choosing to spend time with me. I really appreciate that. And with that, this is Ramsey signing off.